Tuesday the 11th and um, yeah we're going to do an Arduino project real quick and we're going to use the Arduino on the Latte Panda so this is something I've been wanting to do for a while um, so There's um, something called a, a Nemo glove. So what happens is they use the um, movement of the glove to uh, change the pitch and um, various other settings um, for a music track. Now, we're going to do a similar thing and um, except we to make our life easy which is always good we will be using a light sensor so here we go so there we go, there's our uh, light sensor. So it's got a ground voltage in and it sends out an analog signal. Now, what we needed to do is come back with a tone. And depending on the value of this, we want the tone to go up and down. Um, so I guess the first thing we can do is crank up Windows so we can load the Arduino program. Um, we're probably going to need some wires. Okay, so this speaker it runs on three volts. You can get three volts from there. Um, I don't like using power off that only because it's we've already got some um, pretty serious power draw. I think with. Um, We got some pretty serious power draw just with Windows itself, so I'll get a um, an external power source. Um, when you're hooking anything up to Arduino, um, if you put a signal in here, you need to have a ground back, otherwise um, it doesn't know what to do. There's no loop, so even though that can have a, a power in and and a um, and a ground there. You need to also run the ground over to the Arduino, or in this case, Latte Panda. So let's just see what we have in wires. So we're going to need three, three. If I got these ready earlier, it would have been good male to female which I seem to be quite short on there'll be some somewhere I'm positive oh, there's one no there's one can do is cheat so we can well that's probably pretty good we've got red black and then we've got a signal in the middle so if 
we can go red. Black. And then we're going to use a signal brown in the center. So um, when you first start up Latte Panda, then you crank, you crank in Arduino. Now, you have to make sure that the, I made a mistake, the, the um, Arduino on board this is actually called a Arduino Leonardo, so there's different boards. Um, I guess you can look it up. So yeah, so it's registering. If you if you see say Comport one and Comport three, and you press that and it's not working, um, uh, I just updated my Arduino, and that fixed that problem. Um, so that can we'll just put it sketch here so that that can that can be a um, a problem sometimes so, so I just updated it and then it recognized it after that so uh, another way around it is to go into device manager um, so what if I go Okay, it's recognizing it. Um, I don't really, I don't, I don't like the new Windows settings. I think it's, it's just, just not for me. So, all right, we'll go into ports and we'll see that the communication port will always be there, but the one of these ports. Well, is the Arduino itself. If that comes up with just COM port 3, you need to update your Arduino um, program itself. And uh, yeah, that should fix that. And that will save you some pain, I'm certain. All right, so let's have a look here. Ground, out, and voltage in. So voltage in is on the far side, which is great. Signal out is in the center. And ground is on this side. So that's ready to plug in. Speaker. So we have a red and we have a black okay then we need another black a fairly long one so um, So just yes, this one. So all right. So I might get up the. I should put this in this in the best spot. be fine. I think that's still recording. Yep. Okay. Cool. So the 
these inside ones towards this end they're ground so we can go here that's one ground you want to be careful you don't you don't want to short off this um, it'll ruin your day so that's ground and you want that and that to be connected as well uh, right now we want positive less maybe I could do it like this might be a bit better. so if I go like this and I go like this aha yes this is a uh, seems to be a much better system and we'll try and keep it away from this we'll hide that inside okay cool so that's that's back to that so now we need a signal out um, now let's just go back to our Arduino. First thing you need to do is check if it's working. So Blink is a, um, I guess it's the default program to, it automatically defaults. Pin 13 is the default. And there's always an LED on an Arduino on pin 13 so when you upload it with this button here okay so 100 milliseconds one second so that cycles one second so we've successfully got that working okay next stage is we want to get an analog input so our analog input will use um, let's use a five, which is the third one up. So one, two, right. Next to it, we have ground. Oh, if in doubt, jam it in. Um, so we've got five volt output here, so we we'll use that. Right. So because we're on pin A five, we're going to have to modify the analog read sketch. So there's an example on here, a basics, um, analog serial read. Okay, so, integer sensor value. So every time it reads this, it spits out sensor value. It, sensor value, that could be X, doesn't matter what it's called. Um, and we want it on pin 5 and we change the description to pin 5 and that delays in microseconds we'll, we'll push that out to half a second otherwise um, it doesn't work it's trying to do it every um, yeah thousand times a second and um, it doesn't like that. So let's just upload that. Okay, and what we should get is the values start coming in. So they should be low, then high, and then the more we 
probably shade it. Okay, that's working great. Now, what are we going to do with that sensor value? So, we want to make a tone with that. So, we could make another um, integer, but we don't really need it. Um, so, we can put in an equation. So, we can go tone. And it's important that you use the capitals here. If you don't, if you don't put the capitals in, it won't work. Um, programming is very specific, um, so yeah. All right. So I think the first pin is the pin um, is where you're going to put it. So we're going to put it on a digital pin, and we will use. Let's use pin 13. So, yeah, pin digital 13. I think digital, we can just put 13. Comma. Sensor value. Now, because that sensor value is down um, in the two integers, um, we need it to have a high frequency, otherwise it's too low to hear. So we'll put an equation in here, so we'll multiply it by, say, 100, and then we need a duration. So let's just make it 200 milliseconds, and we'll end that line there. Alright, so what's going to happen? Sounds a value. Analog read 5. Alright, let's just see, we'll verify that and see if that, okay, well, that's amazing. Okay, so if we look at our Serum. Okay, so, so what we need now is a tone out. And digital pin 13 is 1, 2, 3 up from analog 5. So it's fairly, um, it's fairly long way, so we'll try and get a long wire. Um, that's preferably not, um, a, uh, a black or a red, so orange is always a good one for signal, so, this is our little 2 watt speaker, okay, so, we're going to do analog one, two, three. And there's no sound because I haven't given it power. switch there so that's kind of high pitched so um, let's bring that down to 10 and we'll see what that does
Okay, so there's our program, and um, yeah, that's a simple little tone program. We can change this as a uh, now, but I'm not sure if we can make that constant or not. Um, I'm not. Uh, someone can correct me. Yeah, it doesn't like it. So. Um, if we go a thousand, because I'm measuring it every 500, really push it all right so there we go job done I'll show everybody one more thing which is um so, so how does it make the tone? So what it does, it sends out a signal. Um, so if you say have like a uh, tuning fork, okay? Oh, that's terrible. It does you hit it and it oscillates so spin that sideways okay it oscillates like that now why do they call it a sine wave let's just make an approximation here. So Starting in the wrong spot because I haven't got room. Okay, so right. so as you can see, it's that continues down there. So as that scoots around the circle, oh, goes down. When you put um, now these oscillations, they can have different characteristics. So you can have um, oscillations that go like and go up, then they can have a another oscillation down here. Or they can have oscillations that go in another car for some reason. You can have oscillations that sort of start off like this. Okay, so um, if you combine all that, so if you flick that into there, that's when you can get different sounds. And how does the speaker work? So. You've got a magnet. Okay, you 
个，呃 ，voice call， 所以就是 ，bang here， now it puts an electrical signal into here， and it pulls that back and pushes it forward depending on the wave. And that's how it makes the sound, and it, and it works the other way around. So, if you if you're recording, okay, and you're pushing that in and out, so just like just like a generator in a way, um, it's creating a small electrical current, and that small electrical that small electrical current um, can be measured and then recorded. So, it, even if you look at a record, if you look at a close up for the old vinyl records but it's little bumps like this little little sound waves so you can do the same electrically by scooting it into that creating a small electrical current and um, that's how it gets recorded that's a simplistic way but yeah anyway that's how I understand it I don't know if anyone can add to that, but um, yeah. Anyway, cool. Thanks for having a look.